All right, all right, all right. Hello, my friends. Hello. This is Robin of Holstein House Podcast. How are you today? It's actually Friday instead of Thursday. Oh my gosh, Thursday was a nightmare. I won't go into why. Well, I might later. <laughs> so today, I just I just wanted to try to get into this Friday routine, and it didn't really work. I mean, obviously, this is Friday, and I'm recording this, so it kind of works, except this is not the schedule I was wanting to um, to work with. What I really want to do is I want to get the podcasts um, and some of the videos uh, recorded earlier in the morning. And what I ended up doing this morning, trying to tidy up the kitchen, I realized that I had some vegetables that I had bought that needed to be put into a ferment like probably last night. Um, and so I needed to take care of that today. And I've got some cabbage. I'm going to do a uh, video on um, just sauerkraut. I mean, everybody does sauerkraut. But I've got one of the, um, it, it's a brown crock. It's probably a couple gallon crock that I'm going to do a really big batch in. And I've not done that before. I usually do it in uh, half gallon mason jars. Because it's just Wayne and I. And so there's not a real big demand for sauerkraut. But I've got some kibasi, and I like to fix sauerkraut and kibasi, and I need to get on that right away. I know some people will home can sauerkraut. I thought about that, but I'm kind of I'm kind of of a double mind on that because the temperatures that you get to to home can it kills the beneficial probiotics and I kind of don't see the point I mean either you want sauerkraut for the probiotics or you why have sauerkraut pardon me I've got the hiccups again I do that a lot I am now in a well I now have an account with telegram the app telegram I don't know what to think of it. Honestly, there's so many of these different social media programs out there. I just can't keep up with all of them. I also put an account on TikTok, which I really didn't want to do because I I don't need the Chinese government knowing my business. On the one hand, I think, why would the Chinese government even care? But on the other hand, I, I know what they do. I know the point. The point is to gather generalized information about how, I don't know that it's necessarily just the United States, but for me, it'd be how people in the, the average citizens in the United States behaves and thinks and does things they like, keep them distracted, and continue to destroy them from within. If not from, well, I guess that particular virus was from within too, wasn't it? I mean, I don't want to get onto that really. <laughs> I mean, I do on one hand because I love this debate. I really love to debate these things. But when it's just me, I just, I don't want to be the angry white person out there. What was I? Oh, this is, hey, okay. This is episode 25, 25, can you believe it? 25 of the Holstein House podcast. Uh, we premiered on the Fountain Network and I still prefer the Fountain Network. I love the value for value uh, idea. I, I love the idea of the economy that it's trying to build the alternative economy or I don't know if alternative is the right word, but anyway, the economy that they're trying to build there. I love that. I really do. And I, I hope to stay with it. I understand that they have um, put out in beta another fix 
on the app. I don't have that yet. I can tell you, uh, for those of you who will get to see the video, because I am doing a video at the same time right now, you will probably see um, do, 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 do. I will show you. I'm, I'm conscious of the um. I am conscious of the um. But it comes out before. <laughs> it's like some people with the F bomb. It comes out before they think about it. So, for those of you who are on the video, this is what happens when I try to look at the top 50. I get the error of something is wrong or something went wrong. Something went wrong. Hot on found. That's the top 50. It's been that way for weeks. Weeks. I did report it. And I've, I've shared with you that I reported it before. So then I try to go to activity, which sh should be showing me the activity of people I follow. And it says something went wrong. Something went wrong loading your notifications. It's been that that happened before the other one happened. So it's been months on it. I'm assuming that my sats are correct. I don't know that because the rest of it's boogered up. I've got messages from your frost nose and HJ. I think I've responded to most of them. I think. I don't know. They stop at some point. I, I don't know what I've responded to and what I haven't. So I probably won't be updating unless I sit here today and uh, calculate them out. It is epiphany, you guys. That means uh, we can take our Christmas decorations down now. Actually, I leave mine up anyway until after the first of the year and so that just happened Sunday so this will be the first weekend I can do that but now uh, the podcast is also on Apple podcast Google Podbean Spotify Amazon music although I ha Amazon music audible although I haven't tried to look at it there I don't don't have that tune in I have I heart a have player, I'm not sure what player is, listen notes, I'm not sure what that is, and Samsung. I know what Samsung is, I've never heard of their podcast. So if you're listening or even watching, uh, I hope you will boost, clip, share, tell all your friends and followers who are interested in these kind of things that I'm out here. Uh, ask them to give me a check, checking out, uh, ask them to you know, like and boost and share on uh, you know, as well and subscribe. I keep forgetting to say subscribe. And if you participate in the value for value economy and you find anything that I say today of value, whether it's entertainment value and you just roll on the floor laughing hysterically or you kind of chuckle or you say, hey, I didn't think about that. Or that's new. If you find any, that, those are, that's value. If you find anything I've said today of value, I hope you will express that with value in return. And for those who are part of the uh, podcast 2.0 and into the value for value, that would mean a share of sats. Some people say tip. I kind of don't like the idea of tip because when you go to a restaurant anymore, they put a screen, if you, if you pay with your bank card, which 90% of us do, a screen pops up that, has pre-populated amounts for tips and then it says others so that it makes you feel lesser if you don't want to tip at 20 percent if you want to tip at 15 percent say or 10 percent and that's not listed on the screen then then you have to go and fill it in i don't want to assume that you want to tip me any particular amount so if i have earned your appreciation if i have earned your acknowledgement uh, if i have earned your if i have earned the 
uh, the value, then I hope you will share it with me. That's absolutely the worst way to say that. Let's see now. But please share. And those of you watching the video, I know it's not all that great to look at me, you know, especially today because I've been working and in, in, in here in the house and, and cooking and, and I just am very disheveled. I hope you will subscribe. I hope you will share it. I hope you will like it. All of those things. And please comment. Tell me where you're lis listening from, watching from. I mean, I don't need to know your GPS location so that I can drop a smart, smart bomb on your house or anything like that. You know, just in general, just a general, a county and a state even, uh, or a province, so that, you know, I can have an idea of, of who all's out there and what all you're doing. Well, we talked last time about the porch columns. I think we did. I have written down that we did. I have written down to update you on that. Uh, I was very frustrated yesterday and i had i did uh, i think my rumble live included it i deleted one of uh, i started a live and then i stopped it because i was so very frustrated and i was saying things that i didn't need to say anyway and i was very frustrated that i had not heard back from several people about several things a couple of them were one was the contractor that we're using to deal with the porch columns. One was someone that I had offered some work to, offered that I would, you know, basically pay her under the table, pay her cash to come and help me with some things. And she had not gotten back with me. And uh, another was somebody who had reached out to me to, to, uh, to help with something. And I said, okay, I'm ready when you are, please let me know. And I've heard nothing else. So I've been riding that fence that when do you reach out how much do you push how much do you pull and why in the world am i dealing with this out of so-called grown adults so i really kind of went off um not like foul language or throwing bottles or anything like that but i was so very frustrated and i said some stuff that i probably shouldn't but i really need to know i i would like to have your opinion How much do you push when you need a job done and someone said they will help you? How many times do you go back to that person or that company and say, you, sa you said you were going to help me with this and I've not heard back from you in you know, two days, two weeks, whatever. How much do you push before you say they don't want my business, they don't want my money, move along? I struggle with this because I have a little bit of a temper sometimes. It's something that I work really hard on. I can get aggravated really quick and snap at people. And not mean to, but I do. So I was dealing with the emotions of that yesterday. I had gone to my rheumatologist, which that went fine. I was trying to record some live, um, well, trying to record live. I was trying to do a live feed on Rumble. Turned out I couldn't. My headphones weren't working right. That wasn't the reason I couldn't, but in addition to my headphones weren't working right. So I was only recording with the phone instead of the headset. And it was picking up a lot of truck noise because I was driving my truck and it was just almost inaudible. And I just really got tremendously frustrated. And I had I've come to the conclusion that I basically wasted good money on those headsets because the the microphone doesn't work properly, even though you have it set. It claims that it's a Bluetooth, but you have to plug it into the lightning port on the iPhone. It's crazy. But anyway. I was getting very agitated. I was trying to find a, some shoes for my dad. I had bought him new shoes for Christmas. He couldn't get his foot down in it the way the back of the heel was made. He was struggling with it. He has a very thick, uh, very thick, I don't know what the top of your foot's called, just the top of the foot. So it's not just the arch. It's the actual physical top of his foot is very thick. 
and he has trouble with shoes. So I couldn't find shoes that were his size. I mean, he wears a wide size anyway, and they just, I was aggravated. And it turned out those, the ones that I got him didn't fit today either. But I was taking it out and try, and putting it out there in public like celebrities might do. Not that I'm a celebrity. You know, when they go out there and they run their mouth and then they have to backtrack and apologize for it. I, I didn't want to do that. So I, I stopped the live feed and deleted what I had done because there's just, it was just not very nice. I didn't call anybody's name, but it's still, I wasn't being very nice about it. I still need to know though. So I reached out to, okay, let me do it this way. A friend of mine, and we've talked about this person before, is a man manager of kind of like halfway house for women. She actually, we had lunch and discussed this for a couple hours back in the late summer. She wanted me to uh, come and teach some of these ladies some recipes that were made with ingredients that, you know, someone with very low income, very low income would be able to do. So I did. I, I, I combed through my recipe books. I looked at some alternative things and, and worked some stuff out. I, I made everything that I was presenting. I actually, that's the, the recipe book that I have on Etsy. Um, that's where, why this came about. The recipes are soup based. Soups are, you know, uh, the, the off brands are under a dollar a can. You can take, and, and I'll give you this one just for the example. If you take a can of cheese soup, nacho cheese soup, and you put a couple tablespoons of, of that, you, you can thin it down with milk if you want or, or not. But you put about a tablespoon of that in your scrambled eggs. And on toast, you've, you've increased the egg protein, the protein in the eggs because of the cheese soup. Of course, you've increased the calories. I understand that this is not a, a Weight Watchers uh, recipe book. It, it's and, and you serve it with toast and some coffee and it does fill you up. The addition of the cheese soup makes kind of a kind of an omelet out of your scrambled eggs and and it will fill you up. And you can do that with several eggs. And feed your family breakfast for a little for a dollar and a half or so so i went through i spent a long a lot of time putting these things together and i spent a lot of time putting the cookbook together and i took my own photos i i made every meal you know i made all the measurements and everything and i when i was ready i told her i said okay Whenever you're ready for me to come down there, this is what I have prepared. I didn't give her the cookbook, <laughs> but I told her I have it. It's based on these things because she was going on about, you know, rice and beans, beans and rice. And yes, I get it. I get it. But you can't, that's not sustainable over the long run. And you're not going to help these women by just talking down to them like that so uh they're already having a hard time tr treat them treat them decently so i haven't heard back from her on that topic although we have messaged each other she has messaged me and we've had conversations about other things so i don't know do i go ahead and push this hey you said and i've been waiting a few months now i guess you don't want this i mean the other the other situation is a young person who I say young person she's in her 30s <laughs> she's a grown woman for heaven's sake offered to, I offered to pay her cash to help clean the house so that I could do work because the house has to be cleaned but I also have to work I was offering her 30 bucks if it took her an hour, then it was 30 bucks an hour. If it took her two hours, then it was $15 an hour. So, you know, it was up to her. Here's the rate. You can, you know, and it was just to mop, sweep, and dust. 
that's it. The lower part of the house, the first floor of the house, I should say, because we've got an upstairs and a basement. And it was just for the first floor. Less than 900 square feet because there's furniture. Hello. You don't, I mean, there's stuff that you, you can't move. You know, sinks, refrigerators, cabinets. Anyway, I haven't heard from her. And I figured I would by now. I told her we'd start after the holidays. Well, I don't know. Maybe she's thinking of next week. So I don't know how, you know, it's been about three weeks since I talked to her about that. And at the time she was okay with it. So I haven't heard anything back there. Do I now push that? I don't like to be pushy. <laughs> I really don't. The next one has kind of resolved itself. I shared with you about the columns rotting out front on the porch. The I, we knew that there was some decay. We had uh, we had it we had them sealed up well with paint and stuff. Not long after we moved in here. Now the exceptional freeze that we had over Christmas. Uh, with the, the dampness of the snow and everything, you know, and then so you get the snow and all that stuff. Obviously, I'm not talking to kids, but snow and dampness seeps into creeks and cracks and crevices. Even if you think you have something painted very well, there's somewhere that you don't or something that you've missed. There are screw holes for the rails going in. There's nail holes and stuff from other things and the flagpole is on it. And so there's moisture getting into this wood. There's this hard, really deep freeze. The really the below freezing temperatures and the wind chill that drops it even that much more. And then we had a pretty quick thaw. The thaw was just over a couple of days. And I go out and, and my porch and the rail has separated from the column. And there's this puddle of or this pile of uh, rotted wood debris where the bottom screw from the rails attached to the column. So it was pretty bad. The column has even dropped more and the, and the roof is actually kind of, kind of tilting a little bit where that column is rotting and settling and collapsing on itself. So I, I spoke to the husband. We went to the big box stores on Monday we ended up buying um, uh, structural columns made out of um, composite. And we've got four of those to put up. And he's got, the husband's got to work the next, uh, well, he's got to work at least another week. So today's Friday. I know that he's working until at least in the business next Friday. So I reached out to the contractor friend of ours that we've had to do some work with us. And I said, can you, do you have any time the next seven days to do this? He said, I'll come by and look at it. Then I didn't hear anything from him for a couple of days. Yesterday was that second day. I mess, I went ahead and messaged him because this is, this is kind of urgent. And if he couldn't do it, I needed to try to find somebody else. And I, you know, I, I'm texting him and I said, if you, because I didn't want to say, you said you were going to stop by. I haven't seen you, you know, that kind of thing. So what I said, and it was true. I said, I have a doctor's appointment this morning. I don't know if you were stopping by today, but come on over. Don't worry if I'm home. I don't need to be here. And a little later in the morning, he answered me. He said, I'm going over shortly. I'll let you know you're going to be home this evening. And I said, yeah, he'll be home. I wanted the husband home for this, not for any weird reasons, but because I want him to hear the conversation of how the contractor's got to deal with this and what's about to happen. So we met up with the contractor yesterday evening and something that Wayne and I hadn't thought when, you know, I was kind of thinking we'd replace those columns one at a time. Uh, the contractor said, well, I can do it all in one day. What we'll have to do is bring a floor jack or floor joist or whatever it's called. And, I guess a jack. I don't know. Anyway, and we're going to have to lift the the roof of the porch up to where it's level again because it's sunk down on, on the one corner. 
lift it up to where it's level again, and then just a tidge more so that we can get the co old columns out and get the new columns in there. And I don't know. <laughs> This is why I'm not a contractor. Or maybe because I'm not a contractor, this is why I didn't realize this. We thought we we could replace them one at a time. And we probably could have. But when Wayne measured the columns so that we knew what, what size to go by, the columns were different heights. So after the contractor left yesterday evening and Wayne and I were talking about it, I said, you know, it dawned on me that probably the reason those columns are different heights is because they replace them one at a time. So you're lifting up or you're raising this area here and you can scoot this one in. When you come over here, this one, maybe this piece of the roof has sagged just a little bit, but you don't realize it because, you know, you're just <laughs> replacing it. So you trim this column off to stuff it in here. And so it's, you know, <laughs> maybe that's what happened to the whole thing anyway. So we're, that's what we're figuring, but it's not going to be cheap. As a matter of fact, it's going to be quite expensive to replace those columns. And we, while we were talking to the contractor, I told him, he, he said, well, you could just replace that one. And I said, absolutely not. And he just kind of looked at me funny. I said, uh, I'm not going through this again while I live in this house. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix all of them at the same time. And those out there should should not rot. Granted, they are the composite with a metal post or pole or whatever up the middle. And I guess that metal could rust over time. But surely, by the time that happens, that front porch would have been replaced four or five times if the house is even still standing. So the contractor turned, just looked at me and said, well... All right, then. I said, well, I don't. I don't want to have to do this again. And because the other ones we know have some rot. And probably it may be even worse than what we think because they haven't been disturbed. And you may go to take them down and they just go, you know, like a, one of those cartoons when the termites all run up and get something and you just see the little, little dust cloud settle to the bottom. I don't know if they're even allowed to show those kind of cartoons anymore. The world has destroyed so many good things. I don't even know if you get can watch a Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoon anymore for the violence. Oh my gosh, an anvil fell on his head. So anyway, that is going to be significant. Significant. It will cost up to $1,000 for labor alone. We think we have all the materials that he's going to need, but um, the labor alone is going to be exceptionally, I mean, I, I asked him, I said, I know you can't give me the number. He said, well, I guess really about all I'm going to be pay doing is supplying the labor. And I said, yeah, I guess. He said, oh, I'll have to have a couple guys with me. And I said, I, I, I understand. I don't think you're going to cheat me on this. I trust you to do this right. And I'm okay if you tell me how much it's going to be. And so he grabbed his phone out. He's got a newer phone. Not a brand new phone, but a newer because it's, it's wider than mine. So it's one of the newer phones. And he pulls the calculator up and he does the math real quick. And he says, it's not going to be more than $1,000, but it's, you know, it's going to be up there. And I said, well, okay. An eight-hour day for three guys. I guess that's all right. Uh, so that's what that's going to be. I'm going to have to cut him a check on Monday for $1,000. I wasn't hope, planning to do that. I had other plans for that money because I have a building that needs a new roof. This also means that I had to close the Airbnb calendar because there's going to be a lot of um, noise and stuff. And I, I need, I've got to take down, I've got to pack up the Christmas stuff anyway. So I've got to pack up the Christmas stuff. I've got to tidy up the front porch and move things backwards, take the swing down. I have to, I need to get everything out of the way so that they don't have to trip over any of that stuff. And um, that's going to take some time. I, don't need, I, I just, you know, I just 
close the uh, calendar for the Airbnb or for the B&B. The room's not available basically <laughs> until Tuesday and maybe longer than that. Depending, I, I just hope he doesn't get in there and something else happens that he can't finish it Monday because he's got another project he's working on. A big house. He's building a big house not far from here. So, excuse me, he's waiting for some inspections, I guess, of electrical work. I don't know. Some kind of inspections he's waiting on to get done. And he said he, he'll be free, you know, Monday he can do it. So, again, you know, I, how long do you wait? How long do you wait? I'm not in a position to run, well, the, the halfway house situation is a long drive for me anyway. Would I have, I was fine to do it back in the summer. Now I kind of don't want to because it's bad weather and it's, it's 45 minutes one way. So we're taking big chunks out of a, of a day somewhere. And I am now committed for the next six weeks to Bible study at my church on Wednesday mornings. So I am, I say leading it, but it's, it's a, it's a program. It's an online program. I'll download the handout materials, print them up and hand them out. And then we'll stream the video, 10 or 15 minute video. And then we'll discuss the video and uh, how it applies and, and things like that. So I'm not coming up with the Bible study myself. It is, it's a program. So it's a six week one. I'll be doing that on Wednesdays. So I kind of don't want to, I'd like to do it, but now I'm, I'm committed to something else, you know, and my church comes first. I got to, I, I have a strong call, a strong, I hate to use the word calling. I do hate to use the word calling. I just feel so presumptuous using that word, but it's a strong urging that I need to be working on that church for a while yet. And and trying to get people involved and draw more people in. I'm still listening, you know, I'm, I'm moving on now to, to this. If, if Any comments that you have about how much to push, I'd love to hear or read either way. The ham radio license. I do want to do this and I'm listening to that book the audio uh, book, man, I, I've listened to a lot of it a couple of times now and it's still, maybe when I see it in writing, it'll be easier. Maybe I need to just go ahead and get the printed copy of the book. I'm listening to this stuff and it's just, my brain is just going, you know, just scrambling up. Some of it is very, makes a lot of sense. You know, some of it, is just out there because I'm just not familiar with the electronics part of this. I mean, uh, you know, AM, AM travels this way and FM travels this way and frequency is this and, and I, it, I, I'm not sure. Well, I am, I, I I understand why I need to understand those things so that I can make the radio work. <laughs> but, you know, I, the analogy that, that I live by is I don't have to build an engine to drive a car. <laughs> I just need to know where to put the fuel, how to check the oil, and, you know, that kind of stuff. Where to put the key and start the engine. I don't have to know about the internal combustion process. I, I don't have to know about all that. Stuff. And it feels like I'm being forced to learn how to build a car and how the internal combustion engine works to, 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 in order to rebuild one just to get my driver's license for it. And it just feels, I don't know, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. And I know that there's been millions of people before me that's passed these exams and got these licenses and do quite well with them. Man, I just really feel overwhelmed by it. I really do. And maybe it's because I'm trying to do it by myself. You know, I don't have anybody to bounce this stuff off. 
Uh, I asked the husband if he wanted to get his license. He said, no, not really. So this is one of those areas where I'm going to, I'm going to want to do it, but he, he doesn't really want to. And we have quite a few of those and it's okay. We each need our own thing. There are many things, the big things that we're, you know, jiving with. And that's um, the big, the big steps in life and things. So we're okay there. These are just the little side, side things. But I, I really would like to get it because I really, I want to hear people from around the world and it's kind of like having the the room the b&b to meet people i wouldn't otherwise get to meet to interact with people i wouldn't otherwise get to interact to hear parts of the world rather i i get i used to really enjoy listening to am radio but i don't enjoy it anymore because it's not a it's not a discussion it's indoctrination you need to hear it my way. And if you don't hear it my way, you know, shame on you. You're awful. You know, I, I can't, I, you know, I try to listen to a little bit of AM radio and it's just trying to convince me that the, the host is right about whatever it is they're saying instead of a conversation about the sky is blue. Well, it kind of looks gray to me. Well, why do you think it's gray? Well, there's these characteristics and that. And, well, I didn't think about that. I I don't think I agree with that, but I, I see where you're coming from. And well, maybe it could be a little more blue than gray, but well, I understand. And, you know, you're looking at it from this side and, and I'm looking and there's no conversation. Maybe I'm listening to the wrong stations. I don't know. But but it's just, it wears me out. And that's another thing about social media that I enjoy is, you know, I can, I can dart over here to people who I kind of agree with, but don't necessarily, you know, I can hear their perspective on this topic, you know, and I can think, yeah, I agree with you up to this point, but not about this piece over here. So I, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a roundabout. I I want the thought that I could be on the radio and talk to somebody, whether it's an emergency or not. I get the emergency part of it. I'm not I'm not blinded to that. But to think that I could talk to someone in well, let's say Canada, because recently I had that interview with Tim and his wife, Tim Toolman Cook and his wife, Becky, and they're in Canada and we're sitting here talking, you know, with the, with the uh, internet, but the internet could be taken away from us. If, if I have the ability to use ham radio, it's almost, it's almost like the government can't stop you. You know, they have to find you first. Well, there's ways to not let them find you. If you're on the internet, Al Gore can just cut it off. Oh, I know that was a cheap political shot. I'm sorry. Al Gore didn't invent it, so he can't he can't shut it off, right? <laughs> I had a little cough there. I had to hit the the cough button. But you know, governments we do see governments across the world uh, shutting down access now. In some areas. You know, Elon Musk set up his his satellite so that people could could access the internet to get the word out about what was going on in in those areas. I believe in Ukraine. But I mean, he's just one person. He could shut it back off again, and he he might have. He might have. I'm not sure if he d actually did or if he threatened to. But you know, if I have my ham radio and you know, the government says well, you can't use the internet. Well, I can use the ham radio. And of course, there's more fun, fun things than that. But struggling with the book, <laughs> struggling with the book. That's where I am. And I still haven't seen, I've got to, um, uh, I think it was HJ. It might have been. Oh, give me a second here. I'll figure it out. 
who suggested a different site for me to look for for the exam. Um, was it you, Frostenos? So I did my ham license. Yeah, it was you, Frostenos. Said uh, um, uh, I did my ham radio test at a ham radio swap meet convention in Jackson, Missouri, or Mississippi, Mississippi, I think he says. Uh, but there was also regular testing scheduled at an EOC, Emergency Operations Center. I knew what that was because I've, I've been in them before. In, uh, in a nearby county. If you're still having trouble finding, and I don't have my glasses on, so I'm having trouble reading. I don't even know where they're at. I laid them down here in the house somewhere. If you're having trouble finding a time or place, try a search on ARRL.org for testing sites. So I may try that. I'm I'm in a couple groups on Facebook for ham radio, but I haven't made my presence known yet because I'm still, I kind of lurk a little while and learn and watch people before I jump into these things. I'm kind of... Um, well, backwards that way. I, I just, I don't, when I'm like, like a lot of people, when I'm in a group that I know, uh, I, I do, I do tend to um, talk, but people like to use the word introvert a lot. I, they like to call themselves introverts. I don't know that they really understand what introvert <laughs> is, but so I, uh, although I can speak in groups, to groups and I have, I've, I've, I've chaired a lot of things and I've been president of several organizations and stuff. So I've, I've had to do that. I don't necessarily enjoy it. Let's see, get your license. Let me see. Why should I, I it's not why it's where amateur find a class in your local area. This is on the ARRL.org site. I'm kind of skipping around here. Uh, if you don't see a course in your nearby area, keep checking the page. Check by zip code. Bump, 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 bump. And it says no records found matching your query. Let me go back and try, just put it. Let me put Charleston in instead of my town because nobody's ever heard of charleston let me say and charleston i should be sharing the page for those of you who are watching the video and i'm sorry i didn't i'm just not that skilled with it to automatically do that there at, at this point the a r r l site shows no tests coming up in my area so boo but that's okay because i i need to i need a lot of study do you here's a question for you do you think by listening to things in your sleep you can remember it because i leave headphones i very often i have my headphones in and i'm listening to stuff and i can run um the audible and I have gone to sleep with it in my in my ears and it just run through the book and I'm asleep while it's playing. I don't know if I believe in that stuff or not. I guess your brain's still registering it to a degree. But if you're that asleep that you're not hearing it, are you really hearing it? I do want to get more guests in. That's still a goal. And it has been a goal since Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, now I've had to shut some dates off because of the work on the front porch. That hurt. I also need, there's some work I need to do before the 10th to get uh, associated with our tourism department. And that's, that's going to be a challenge to get it done by then just because of all the other demands of my time. I should be able to get it done but I'm missing some key stuff. Like I don't remember how to log into the, <laughs> I've got it written down. I do own the domain 
but I, I got to get into the back of the domain and load some files. And I got to remember, I've got those notes written down somewhere because I talked to my my hosting company about it a while back. I had another issue, some stuff, some stuff that had to be updated. And I didn't know how to update it, so I called them and had them on the phone. It's like, okay, how do I do this? I can't remember. It's been a long time. I used to do this all the time, and now I just I don't know. So getting more guests in as far as booked nights. I can't get more than two at a time. I'm still, did I share with you that I was thinking about renting just tent space in my backyard? I really am. 10 or 20 bucks a night and come in and have breakfast if you want or not. But a safe, a safe place to tent camp between here and there. I think it'd be fun. I mean, who's going to, you're not going to get vagrants because the vagrants aren't going to be checking, you know, the website for a safe place to tent camp. And, you know, they're going to have to, I, I'm not sure what all, I, how, how I would make it happen, but I can, I can make that happen. I can make that happen. And there's no expense. Look, I, I've had, I've had my Airbnb listing since 2017. I didn't keep it from being dumb. Now, granted, I'm not rolling in the, in the money like Scrooge McDuck, but uh, I, I've been doing okay. I'm not an absentee host. I don't host off site. You know, there's a lot of places that they, people will have a rental place or a cabin or something and they're not anywhere close. And so they'll put it on the Airbnb and then they're upset because people tear their stuff up. I'm not, you know, they're not going to tear my stuff up because they're not going to have access to it that way. But anyway, Air, using Airbnb, I, it, it's still the primary way, even with all the gripes and complaints and changes that there's been recently. It is still the big dog. Okay. So using it is smart if you're going to try this. You got to learn what you're doing first, though. You can't just jump in. I, I mentioned earlier that I lurk and learn before I jump in. I read a lot on Airbnb before I posted my first calendar. And I'm going to tell you, you there's, there's a learning curve. There really is. But it could be done. You can do that. If you've ever thought about it, holler at me. I'll talk to you about it. No big deal. And I've also shared that that I want to I want to be a safe place for people to stay as they're traveling to and fro who are like-minded. People say liberty-minded. It's not just liberty-minded, but You don't want to give your money to some corporation that's going to support stuff with your money because, you know, it was your money till you gave it to them that you don't approve of. And I about guarantee that I'm not supporting stuff that you don't approve of. Holler at me. Holler at me. Bob recently had another itching spell. Bob the dog. Bob White the dog. Bob is allergic to poultry, and actually so is Betty. And the reason I know Betty is, is because by changing her diet, because they both, I can't have two dogs on two different diets. Sorry, unless they're medically necessary. Changing Betty's diet because I changed Bob's diet has reduced her itching significantly. And changing the cat food so that they don't have poultry, it has helped significantly. Because what happens is Bob and Betty both will eat the cat food. Bob wants to eat any food. Okay, not just his food, but Betty's food. He's not fighting her for it. But he is cleaning up after her, which I don't encourage. I, I really don't want him doing that. And he tries to, and Betty tries to eat the cat food, and Bob tries to eat the cat food. And 
several years ago, I talked with our other dogs. I talked to the vet about this. I said, I, I don't, why are they trying to eat the cat food? And he said, it's a difference in the way they make it. And the cat food has a stronger scent and flavor than the dog food. And they like that, but it's not nutritiously good for them, which that I already knew. Because cats and dogs' internal workings are different. That's why some things that your cat cannot take, those poisons to the cat, won't bother a dog, and vice versa. But so he's been itching again, and it's directly related to a well-meaning neighbor who carries dog treats when she takes her walks around town. And she slips each dog that comes to the fence a little treat and talks real sweet to them. And this is all good and well, except Bob itches for three days afterwards. And the mailman, the postman, is the same way. The postman carries milk bone biscuits in his little mail thing so that when dogs come charging at the fence he can try to sweet talk them you know how this works well milk bones have a lot of chicken byproducts in them and they make bob bob had actually gouges scratched in him to where i was having to put medicine on it because of this stuff it was before i figured out what was happening and i took him to the vet for something else i was like you know this is his ears get infected he gets ear infections when he gets poultry and the vet said straight off, he's got a chronic ear issue that is, is just very common in dogs that have poultry allergies. So they can't have that. And you'd be surprised what, what um, pet foods have poultry and poultry byproducts, whether it's duck or chicken or turkey. Even pill pockets, pill pockets of all things, have chicken byproducts in it. So I can't hide his medicine in a pill pocket. I have to give it to him in cheese. It's expensive. <laughs> so, you know, I, I kind of, um, don't forget now. Don't forget. If, if you find some value in anything that I'm saying today, I, and you are in the value for value type of um, economy, I, you know, I appreciate you listening. I hope was something that I said was valuable and I hope it was valuable enough that you, you know, that you share with me. And I hope that, that those of you who aren't in that value for value, that you will share knowledge of this program with your friends that you'll like and subscribe and share. Because that's the only way, you know, we can find out about each other and learn about things from different perspectives. So I, and I know, I, you know, I'm trying to connect with a lot of people in the self-reliant and, and prepper communities. And, and I know there's some hesitation. There's a lot of people who are really unsure because I don't have a homestead. I don't have a big farm. I don't, uh, you know, I don't have a bunch of solar. I mean, it's just, I'm not, I don't fit neatly into those categories, but I am a resource. I am a service for you guys in that, like I said earlier, if you're traveling, it's a safe place for you to stay. Now, I, I don't take children here at the house. If we can get the other place fixed the way I want it, we would be able to take a family, you know, of say four over there. That's going to be a while. I did have someone reach out to me who uh, needed wheelchair access I don't have that but if I can get the other place together right I can fix that it's flat I can widen the doors I think I think I have to look the structure is is cinder block I I don't know how soon I could do that because anything's possible if you've got enough money I don't know that I have the money to do that yet but it's something that I'm considering now it was brought you know it's not something I've thought about before but I'm here, you know, Holstein House, it's robinholstein.com and look on the menu for Holstein House. Um, I'm here, I can provide you with a comfortable and, and I say safe place to stay. And it's safe in that, yeah, it's, it's safe. I don't, I don't, can't imagine you're going to get uh, attacked here. But it's also a place, you know, we're like-minded and you need to, you know, 
be with people who are like-minded. That's why you travel to the festivals. That's why you build your community is so that you're connected with like-minded people so that in times of trouble or not, you know, you go down to the festivals and stuff. That's not trouble. It's you're just having a good time, but you're around your people and you don't want to give your money to, to places that don't support the things that you believe in. Uh, do have some dates open still. Do have some dates closed for construction. <laughs> but yeah, go to RobinHolstein.com and uh, look for Holstein House uh, on the menu. Or you can go to Facebook. I have a Facebook page for Facebook, uh, for Facebook, for Holstein House on Facebook. I have my YouTube, which some of you are watching now, is under my name, Robin Holstein. Um, I do have the TikTok. It's under my name as well. I'm not really much on that yet. I just am really hesitant about the TikTok. I'm doing the Telegram. I've got, um, I've got uh, Instagram. I've got Twitter. I've got a bunch of those. And I'll just look for Hol Robin Holstein and you'll find me for most of them. So I'm coming up on an hour and I want to wrap up here. I have changed the opening a little bit. So hopefully we'll have be right at an hour with the opening and, and uh, out uh, intro and outro and we'll be done there. So I want to encourage you to um, stay connected to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And give us a chance, give us, you know, four or five different videos. I did one today, well, I started one today on a ferment. It'll be a while before I get it done because I don't have any ferments to turn around and show after it's done. I'm about to do some on sauerkraut, which is, like I said, one that a lot of people have done. Um, I still, I'm, I'm going to reach out again to Bob Keller and see if we can lock down a date for his interview. And, uh. I just, I can't wait to talk to him and, and interview him. I think it'll be really great. This is the 20, I'm closing up the 25th episode of Holstein House Podcast, uh, premiering on the Fountain Network. And if you found me on the Fountain, I hope you will boost and clip and share with all your friends and followers, you know, because if I brought you some value, I hope you'll give value in return. And for that, I'm going to call it a day. There are some links in the, show notes that you may be interested in ways to connect with me some uh, uh links to some other sites that i think you'll find interesting keller's um keller's um oh gosh why am i struggling on bob keller's shop <laughs> keller survival gosh i kept wanting to say bob keller's and that's not it. it's keller survival don't forget my friend diane her her um her GoFundMe is still listed. She's still in need of a liver donor, um, live or cadaver. I, I hate I hate it either way. Uh, her GoFundMe is still there. She's still needing money. Some information on the UVA Charlottesville Living Donor Program is there. Hosting House. Uh, buy me a coffee. I'm I'm trying to trying to build up some some money to work on the, what the, the dog house out there. Coal River Coffee is still listed there. We're still serving Coal River Coffee to our guests who request it. Uh, the link to 21 Days of Bitcoin is there. I've shared that with a lot of people, a lot of people, and they're reading about it. I don't know if they're being convinced, but they are reading about it. But you can find me on Substack, YouTube, Facebook, MeWe, free, free setting, Twitter, Instagram, Rumble, Locals. Locals I don't do much with. My ho RobinHolstein.com website, obviously, uh, and uh, Fountain FM. So with that, I'm going to say adieu and have a good weekend. If I don't talk to you again before the weekend's up, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.